All right, welcome to month four of the NAFA 2020 Member Experience Program. Today we are joined by our special guest, Dan Finley, who will talk about one of the most popular member benefits that we have. Dan, if you'd please introduce yourself and tell us about your program. Great, thanks, Zach. Well, hi everyone, uh, I'm Dan Finley, President of Advisor Solutions. Uh, as you may or may not know, Advisor Solutions is the premier financial advisors, insurance and, and uh, of financial advisors and insurance agents, business development, consulting, and coaching service. We're in the business of helping advisors and agents build a better business. Now, today, I'm excited to be here and uh, to explain to you what I call the Advisor Solutions NAFA Connection. And uh, what we're going to do is, what we're going to do is, we're going to talk a little bit about what that means to you as a as a uh, a member, as a and what benefits you can get out of it. And we're going to cover a lot of stuff today, but before we do. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to let you in on a little secret. It's a secret that took me years to figure out. It really did. And I've been in the industry for 26 years. And I've been coaching for 15 years. And it took me years to figure out. But once I did it, it changed everything. Everything about my business and also my life as well. And so here's what it is. For any challenge that you've ever gone through, any challenge you've ever gone through in your business, any challenge you're going through right now or any challenge that you will go through in the future, know this. There is always, always, always a solution. There's always a solution. And it reminds me of a story that happened years ago when, uh, when I was brand new in the industry. Now, I got into the business in 1993. And I remember, I don't know if you can relate to this or not, but I, I remember coming into the, the office early and leaving late. In fact, I remember I used to try to get to the gym at 9 o'clock at night. So I came into the office early one day. And I was walking down the hall and I got onto the elevator and nobody was around and the elevator doors are starting to shut. And I heard somebody running down the hall and they yelled to me and they said, hold the elevator. And so I held the elevator and this person came shooting in. And when they came in, they looked at me and I looked at them and I knew who they were. I, I knew who they were because they were a veteran advisor. And this is back when I actually thought that a veteran advisor was somebody that had been around for a long time. And this guy had been around for 25 years. And that's when I thought 25 years was actually a long time, but I don't anymore. So this guy looked at me and I looked at him and he said, uh, how's it going? And he, said, he was just being polite. And I said, well, good. And he said, well, good. And, and then I said something that I'll never forget. And it just came out. I said, I feel like I'm treading water and I'm looking for land. Now, I don't know if you've ever gone through this. And I've talked about this before all over the United States and even in Canada. I've talked about this feeling at the very beginning, or even if you are a veteran, where you feel like you're treading water and looking for land. And what I mean by that is you don't know which way to go. You know, if you jumped over a, off a boat and you were out in the ocean and you jumped off a boat and you swam around and you came up from underneath the water and you realized that you didn't know where the boat was and you couldn't see the land, you could swim one way and drown. Or you could swim the other way and drown. You just don't know where to go. And it's pretty stressful. And so... So what I did is I, I, I remember I went to my office and this guy did the elevator doors opened up and he went to the left and I went to the right. He went to his corner office and I went to this little, little office that I had, which was literally a closet at the time. And, and I sat there in my closet. Uh, it was a big closet, but it was a closet. And I sat there and I thought, why would I, why did I say that? I feel like I'm treading water and looking for land. And it's funny because I, I then realized that I was lost. And so what you don't want to be is lost. So what we're going to learn today, whether you're on a production plateau, you're, you're new in the business, or you've been in the business for 30 years, what we're going to learn today is a little bit about advisor solutions. And we're going to talk about the advisor solutions NAFA connection. In other words, what are we doing with each other uh, as far as uh, you know, NAFA and advisor solutions? We're going to talk about how NAFA members can benefit from what we're doing, what we have been doing. And we're going to talk about the solution sessions topics. And solution sessions are these topics, these free topics that are going out to you as a benefit for being a member. And then we're going to talk about advisor success stories. You're going to hear some advisor success stories that are going to blow you away. And, and they're real success stories of advisors and agents that are getting humongous, humongous success. And you can do that too. And then we're going to talk about the next step. What do you really want to do next? So let's begin. And so, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about Advisor Solutions. Who is Advisor Solutions? Now, uh, let's find out. 
Advisor Solutions, as I said, is a business development, consulting, and coaching service. It's designed for, to help financial advisors and insurance agents build a better business, one solution at a time. And so for years, for the last 15 years, I've been coaching financial advisors and insurance agents. So I got into the business. I told you a little bit about I got into the business in 1993. And in 1993, I didn't know what I didn't know. And I didn't know I didn't know it. And so what I mean by that, it's called unconscious incompetence. I don't know if you've ever felt this way, but when you got into the business, you probably didn't know what you didn't know. And I didn't either. In fact, for 10 years, 10 years, I was kind of winging it. And I got to tell you right now, winging it doesn't work. Winging it doesn't work. And so I got to tell you a quick story. Before I even started Advisor Solutions, I was, I was in the business for 10 years and I, I just closed a, a pretty good account. It was a 400, I think it was a 435 or $450,000 annuity. And they had just left and I had the paperwork in front of me and I reached over to the phone and I grabbed the phone and I picked up the phone and I thought, you know, I'm going to call somebody else. Here's the problem. I didn't know who I was going to call. I didn't know what I was going to say. I didn't know <laughs> what it was going to be about. In fact, I looked at my computer to figure out who I was going to call next. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm winging it. So I put down the phone and I looked at the phone and I thought, wow, I was winging it, who I was going to call, what I was going to say and everything. I was just winging it. And I realized winging it doesn't work. And so I thought to myself, you know, I, I wonder what else I'm winging. So that night I went home and I, I made a circle and I sat down and I looked at the circle and I thought, okay, if this were the business, what is this? And I thought to myself, no, it's a pie chart. It's a pie chart. And inside the pie chart are different facets of the business. In other words, I really need to get good at time management. I need to get good at prospecting. See, if I'm not good at my time management, I'm not even prospecting at all. And, and I need to get good at prospecting. I need to know what to say, how to say it, how to handle objections, things like that. I also need to know uh, about sales. How do I close? What's the best way to close? And what about um, relationship management? How do I make an effortless connection? That's what I call it. And so the list went on and on until I, I really figured out about eight different facets of the business. And that was the beginning of Advisor Solutions in 2004. I mapped out the challenges and the goal was to figure out what are the solutions. So I took things from 40 different sources and uh, while I was in production, and it was interesting because I showed my boss and I was coaching. I'd been coaching the rookies in the office since around 96. But uh, I started Advisor Solutions on the side and nobody knew. And it started to mushroom. It started to really grow. In fact, to the point where I couldn't run my business and coach 14 advisors at the same time, doing 14 hours worth of coaching. And so in 2006, I walked away from my, my business to do Advisor Solutions full time. And that's when I launched group coaching sessions, group, the co group coaching program. And it's interesting because in 2006, when I launched the first program, I never thought that by this recording in 2019, I'd still be doing group coaching sessions. In fact, uh, I've done over 100, I believe, of group coaching sessions. And in 2007, I started speaking around the country. I started speaking in different NAFA conventions and other conventions. And in 2018, I launched what I call the Monday Morning Motivation. Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because you, as a member, get the Monday Morning Motivation if you want it. So the Monday Morning Motivation is just a motivational message that you will get in your inbox every Monday. And it's, it's a, uh, just a motivational message that talks a little bit about a famous quote and how it pertains to our industry. And then also how, what you could do regarding this quote and this topic. What sort of action steps? And in there, I'm also giving away a free audio every month. And, uh, and so that's kind of launched itself as well, uh, where we've got thousands and thousands of advisors and agents, most of which are NAFA members that receive that every Monday. And then in 2009, I decided, you know, it's time to write a book. So I started writing a book, and it took two years to write. And I don't know if you've ever written a book before, uh, but it takes a long time. This is a 473-page book called 101 Advisor Solutions. And, uh, and you can find that, I think, in your bookstore, but you can also find it uh, on my website as well as in, in other locations, lulu.com and so on. 
And so I published that book in 2011. And by now, as of this recording, 2019, I've done over 20,000 plus hours of coaching in one-on-ones and in groups. So there isn't a challenge I haven't heard. There isn't a solution I haven't applied. And so I'm confident that if you're a NAFA member and you want to get to that next level, just let me know because we can help you get there. So what is Advisor Solutions? What is the Advisor Solutions and, and NAFA Connection or the Advisor Solutions NAFA Connection? Let's find out. So in 2007, I began speaking at these uh, NAFA local chapters. And so what we did is we just kind of introduced ourselves to a lot of the NAFA presidents and boards. And we do that every year. We send out an email uh, individually to the NAFA board members in, in the local chapters and stuff like that. And I started getting some interest. And so what happened was we started, we started literally uh, setting up some appointments to go out and fly out and speak at different locations. So if you're one of the presidents or one of, or on, the, uh, uh, on a local board or in charge of setting up speakers, I'd love to talk to you about what we've done before. We've done a lot of presentations. And in 2013, I believe it was 2013, I was asked by NAFA to, to come down to Washington, D.C., or actually to the, the headquarters and, uh, in Church Falls, I believe, and to literally, uh, literally to do this thing called Programs in a Box. And they were kind enough to let me come down there. And literally what I did is I spoke uh, to a camera for four hours. And if you've ever done that, um, speak right into a camera for four hours. There's a lot to it, um, but uh, it was a lot of fun, and they condensed it down to a three-hour presentation. And I think you can still find that on the website. And uh, in 2014, Advisor Solutions started uh, the Advisor Solutions session. So what we're doing is every two weeks, we're doing a free group coaching session to you, for you, as a member. So if you haven't joined us in one of those free group coaching sessions, you should. And we've got 100 plus hours of audio. So if you want one of these audios, just shoot me an email. We're going to cover 10 topics that I think are pretty popular amongst the NAFA members. In 2015, I, I spoke at the uh, NAFA National Convention. 2016, did it again. Spoke at the NAFA National Convention. In 2017, I was, I was uh, supposed to speak there, but I, I believe that was the year that we had that hurricane come into uh, to Florida. So we, we canceled that. But in 2016, I was asked to write the NAFA Professional Prospecting Skills Builder. And you can find that on the, on the website. There's a lot to that. It took a long time to put that together. And I believe it's 100, I want to say 150 pages. I'm not sure. And there's a three-hour uh, webinar along with it. And just recently, in fact, last week, I was asked to moderate the NAFA National Diversity Symposium. So I hope you can join us down, down, uh, down there. I, I, in Gosh, I think it's May, May 13th and 14th, or 14th and 15th, excuse me. So there's a lot that's been going on with Advisor Solutions and NAFA, but what does this have to do with you? What and how, so how do you as a NAFA member benefit from any of this stuff? So we're going to cover a lot of this stuff in just a second. And what's interesting is usually I have a lot of uh, participation from people that are on the line. And unfortunately, this is a webinar instead of a, a group coaching session. And so uh, unfortunately, we don't have that participation. So it's almost like I'm doing a monologue versus a dialogue, but I'm going to try to explain everything. And then we're going to open it up for questions. And hopefully we get a lot of questions from you. So feel free to grab a pen and write down any questions that you have. As I explained a little bit about the tools, techniques, strategies, and solutions that we have for NAFA members. So let's talk about the advisor solution sessions. I briefly talked a little bit about that. And really what I'm talking about are these two complimentary one-hour group coaching sessions that we have per month. We have these each month. And what we're really doing is we're spending an hour together. And, uh, and what we're doing is we're talking about a specific topic. Now, like I had mentioned, I'm going to cover 10 topics in this webinar today. And I'm going to talk about what, we re what most advisors and agents get out of this, NAFA members get out of these topics. And so what we also do is we record these. And that's why I have 100 plus hours of recording. And so if you sign up for these, they're absolutely free. You get to come to the group coaching session and here's how it kind of works. What, you're, what we do is we send out, once you've signed up for it, uh, you'll find that on the email that you get every Friday. 
So make sure that you skim the whole email or read the whole email, and you'll find where you can click and sign up for that group coaching session. Once you click that and sign up for it, uh, what you're doing is you're registering with us. And as a result, you'll get the Monday morning motivation if you're not already getting it. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then you also get uh, a quick reminder that we start and you get a white paper of what day we start, what time we start. We're doing these twice, uh, twice a month. And then you get the recording after we finish. Now, we also do another thing where we, if you can't make the audio or can't make the uh, actual session, you can get a recording. And the great thing about that is we've had, gosh, we've had hundreds and hundreds. In fact, we typically get about 50 people that are interested in the recording only uh, every two weeks. So you want to make sure that if you can't make the uh, session, but you want the recording, let us know. And then you get a 30 minute free, 30 minute individual coaching session with me, literally with me. So if you want to, after that session or before the session, if you want to set up a time to talk, feel free. Or if you watch this webinar and you're interested at the end of it, that you want to set up a time to talk, feel free by emailing me and I'll show you what my email address is. So jot that down and just put free 30 minute individual coaching session and make sure that you put free coaching session, NAFA member, because this is only for NAFA members. And then also you get an opportunity, you get an opportunity to, uh, to hear about the best practices that advisors and agents have. So uh, a lot of times what we get is we get camaraderie, ancillary learning, and we get additional solutions from the advisors and agents that are on the line. So it, it turns out to be a lot of fun. Now, once you sign up, you'll get uh, an email from my assistant. You'll get an email from me that says, hey, we're starting in an hour, um, just a quick reminder. And then you'll get an email from me asking again, hey, do you want the audio? Because sometimes people sign up, they don't realize I can send the audio to them as well. You get a 52-week Monday morning motivation. You get a, every Monday morning, you get a, motiv a motivational message. And in there, you get a complimentary one-hour audio. If you want that, uh, just shoot me an email and, or shoot my assistant an email and she'll send it out. And then every Friday, you get the Coach's Corner because you're an AFA member. And it's 52 Coach's Corner messages. These are tips, tools, strategies, and solutions that – you're going to want to take a look at, and what I'm doing is I'm explaining things that are working for other advisors and agents, things that came right out of my book. And we're going to talk about those types of strategies, tips, tools, uh, techniques, strategies, solutions in the group coaching sessions as well. So what are some of these topics? What are the advisor solutions sessions topics? Well, let's find out. We have, as I said, we have over 100 hours of recordings of group coaching sessions with NAFA members. So I sat down and I mapped out the top 10. Let's take a look at what they are. See if you can relate to these top 10, if you have any of these challenges. And if you do, I want you to write this, grab a pen and write this down. I want you to write down uh, that you, you want this audio and then shoot me an email and I'll send you the audio myself. And so the number one uh, advisor solution session is really, it's interesting, it's the advisor solutions mastermind session. The reason that I say this is the number one is because we get a lot of people that show up to this because here's why. What this is all about is we talk about your number one challenge. Here's what's ironic. Whatever challenge you're going through or have gone through or will go through, as I said before, there's a solution. But here's the thing. Here's the ironic thing. I guarantee you that there's at least five other people on the line that have that exact same challenge. So one of the things you might want to write down right now is what your number one challenge is. Grab a pen and just write that down. My number one challenge in this business is blank. So just write that down. Because if you request this audio, I'll send it over to you, and I guarantee you I'll talk about this solution because somebody's bringing up the challenge. So what we do is the advisors and the agents fill out a form, and they share their biggest challenge. So what I do is I go through all of these forms before we jump in. And I do things like this. I say, uh, you know, I do a quick roll call to find out who's on the line. And the next thing that I do is I find out, all right, uh, Joe, you mentioned, and here's an example. Joe, you mentioned that your, your biggest challenge is time management. Tell everybody a little bit about that. So this advise, advisor or agent jumps in and says, my challenge is this. I get interrupted all day long. And um, because I get interrupted so much, uh, you know, it just always seems like I'm putting out fires. And 
I mean, how do I get around that? And I talk to you about a tool or a technique or a tip that work for other advisors and agents. And I'll probably explain, I know what I'll explain, the time matrix to do. It's a tool that I created within my book that I've talked to a lot uh, of advisors and agents about, a lot of NAFA members about, about how to prioritize, prioritize the interruption. So we talk about that tool, and then typically I have somebody like that advisor, in this case Joe, explain the tool back to me so they fully understand. And then I shoot that tool out. I email that tool out to everyone. And then we go on to the next person. And so we do this for a whole hour. So you know what's interesting about this is that every single mastermind session is slightly different. They really are. And sometimes somebody doesn't show up. And so I say, well, who wants to jump in? And sometimes people don't fill out their biggest challenge in their form. And so I say, just tell me your challenge. And so if this was not a webinar, that's the first thing I would ask all of you. What's your number one challenge? So jot down the answer and shoot me an email if you want this, uh, this audio. And I'll shoot the uh, link over for the audio. And also, I will help you uh, by explaining, here's the tool that you want. Uh, and then also, here's what we do. I explain that in the, that session, I explain tool, tips, tools, strategies, and solutions that help each advisor and agent. Chances are at the very end, when I finish up with single takeaways, and that's where I say, tell us your single takeaway. What did you get out of today? Chances are somebody in there is going to say something like this. Well, what I really got out of today is what so-and-so said. And it might not even be me. It might be another advisor or agent, another NAFA member that says, well, what I really learned was something from so-and-so, from Joe. When Joe brought it in his solution for blank, for prospecting, that's working for him. So it's an interesting session. So you definitely want to show up for that one. Uh, we record the session and then we send it out to all the participants and it's free. We send out the recording. Let's talk about the number two. Number two, the, the, the second uh, most popular is mastering questions-based selling. So picture this. A lot of advisors and agents want to get better at asking questions, but they just don't know what to do. And so typically what happens is, is they, uh, they just, they simply, um, they, they just wind up winging it and wing their questions. You don't want to do that. In fact, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a process for asking better questions. I'm, I'm going to talk about foundational questions. Foundational questions are, are what I call foundational questions are just this. They are simply, um, they are simply open-ended and closed-ended questions. Most people know what those are. That's good that they know what they are, but here's what they don't know. Uh, the, the main difference of when you should ask a, an open-ended question versus a closed-ended question. They don't really know that. And then what they also don't know is they don't know um, when it's very effective to use a closed-ended question. Is, would, could, do, did, does, things like that, versus an open-ended question. Who, what, why, where, when, and how. And there's a definite time that you should ask an open-ended question versus a closed-ended question. Then we take it to the next level, understanding spin selling. Spin selling is just an acronym for uh, what Neil Rackham in his book, under, uh, I think it's um, the uh, it's Spin Selling, the, the field book, he talks about this acronym called spin selling. Spin is an acronym for different types of questions, and they are situational-based questions. Those are just uncovering facts. Most advisors and agents are stuck there. And what I mean by that, they're just asking questions like, how old are you? Uh, are you the business owner? Are you married? Do you have any kids? How many employees do you have? Do you have life insurance? How much do you have of life insurance? Do you have health insurance? What's your coverage? Um, things like, do you have an investment, you know, a retirement savings plan? What is it? How much is in there? When you only ask situational based questions, you're only going to uncover facts and you never take it any deeper. What you want to do are pin problem based questions, implication based questions, and needs payoff. Let me explain what those are so you get an idea of what they are and you get a full understanding of why you want to sign up for this one. Problem-based questions uncover the problems, but there's a certain way to, to ask a problem-based question. If I ask three or four situational-based questions and then I jump in with a problem-based question such as, so what concerns you most about retaining your employees? Now, you're going to start telling me the problems that you have with retaining your employees. If I hear enough of the situation, I'm going to identify a problem that you may not even know you have. And if I ask a problem-based question like, what concerns you most? Or uh, 
what keeps you up at night? What worries you? You know, things like that. And I know how to jump in with a problem-based question. Then I can get to a deeper level of communication. And then if I take it to the next level with an implication-based question, what do you think will happen if? I'm going to get you to tell me the results or the consequences, I should say, of not fixing the problem. Hey, what do you think will happen if you don't have enough money in retirement? What do you think is going to happen to the family if you passed away? Do you think your spouse would have to sell the house or can he or she make those house payments on their own? How do you think would help you most? Needs payoff question. How do you think would help you most if I showed you a strategy where my clients make sure that their spouse never has to leave because the house is paid off, the kids can go to college, and they maintain the same lifestyle? How do you think that would help you most if you knew that strategy? Now, when you know it needs payoff question, you're asking a question to help them understand or help you understand the value of your solutions, help you understand what they see as the value to your solutions. So this has been selling, and we spend an hour understanding it to the point where we're taking a quiz, the spin selling question quiz, which I created, so that you can actually take this quiz and you can understand that was a situational based question versus that was a problem or an implication or needs payoff. So it's pretty powerful once you are in this session, because now you're starting to understand what spin selling is. But if you're a part of the group coaching program, I've got a 24 week group coaching program. We spend two hours on spin selling. And what we're doing is we're making sure that you can role play it. In fact, we role play it a little bit in this one, but we, you role play it. So you do spin selling. So when you go out into the field, you're doing spin selling all the time and you're making a, an effortless connection. That's what I call it, an effortless connection. We record that session and uh, we send it out to you. So that is the second one, mastering questions-based selling. You're definitely going to want to sign up for that. The third one, mastering time management. i got to tell you a quick story. There is a guy and, and in fact, <laughs> I just realized that's one of the success stories that I'm going to tell you in a second. There's a guy, a NAFA member, that came to a, a time management session, mastering time management. And he liked it. And he joined group. And he became a client. And uh, tell you what, it transformed everything that he was doing. Now, I'm not going to tell you or spoil the end of the story, but it's such a success story that if you did this, if you use these tools that I'm about to explain, you're going to have the same level of success as long as you stick to the tools. Now, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to take the tools and then customize those and try something new because, you know, they've been tested over and over again. And for the last 15 years, I've, I've pretty much whittled it down to what works and what doesn't. And so what we're going to do is in this session, we're going to understand common challenges. I'm going to tell you a couple of common challenges. See if this is you, if you've been through this. The first challenge is I don't have any structure to the day. So I come into my day, I come into the office, and the day flies by. And at the end of the day, I realize, you know, I'm not sure I got a lot done. Or I really didn't have a structure, so I don't have habits, so I don't prospect all the time. And because I don't prospect all the time, I don't have a steady flow of a pipeline because I'm not con continuously putting people into the pipeline. And the problem with that is because I don't have a steady flow of people that are going through the pipeline, um, I'm not growing this business. So that's one common challenge. No structure to the day. Here's the other common challenge. You've got no way to handle the interruptions. At the end of the day, you leave and you're wiped out. And you're wiped out because all you've been doing all day long has been putting out fires all day. And so it, most people go through those two common challenges. And the solution to mastering time management, which we talk about for an hour, is you have to have structure to the day and a way to handle interruption. Structure to the day and a way to handle interruptions. I'm going to show you how to add structure to the day. I'm going to teach you how to inter, uh, handle interruptions or not avoid interruptions, but prioritize your interruptions so you've got interruption management. Most people go through their entire career and never have a good way to, to manage their interruptions. And so we're going to do actual examples so that you understand, okay, this is how I set up my day. This is what I do when I get interrupted. 
And this is how I continue the process. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There's one more thing to this that I haven't put in here, which is really how do I sustain this so that I wind up having a very successful time management system. In fact, so I feel like I mastered time management. Well, the way to sustain this really comes down to having a reward and punishment system. So if you're a part of the Advisor Solutions Pipeline and Sales Group Coaching uh, Program, you get teamed up with another advisor or agent, another NAFEN member, and you're emailing that person every day. You're emailing that person every day for the entire course for six months, for 24 weeks, and you're telling them, did I win the day, win the game, or did I lose the game? I talked a little bit about structure to the day. The structure to the day is actually a game. And so either you win the game or you lose the game. And at the end of the day, you email your accountability partner, your accountability email, and you're going to be able to tell that person if you won or lost, and you've got a reward and punishment system. And that's what sustains you to succeed because what you're doing is you're constantly putting people in the pipeline and you're constantly sticking to your structure and uh, you're not winging it anymore. So we, again, we record this session and we send it out to the NAFA members. Now we're going to talk about number four, handling objections. So a lot of advisors and agents run into this challenge. What they do is they hear an objection like, I need to think about it. I need to um, talk it over with my spouse. I need to, um, you know, I want to go home and read through this. Okay, so they get objections at the end of the entire, uh, you know, the entire uh, presentation. So picture this and see if this resonates with you. You find this prospect or you prospect and you find this person and you sit down, you do the first appointment. And the first appointment goes pretty well. And you do a second appointment where you've got these recommendations. And at the very end, you think that everything that you've put together is brilliant. You, you honestly do believe, and rightfully so, that these solutions, these recommendations are going to help someone. And you say, any other questions? And they say, no, uh -uh, no. Well, what do you think? Are you comfortable moving ahead? And they say to you, you know, I, I think I want to go home and, and think about it. Here's what most advisors and agents do. They say, okay, um, well, I'll tell you what, why don't I give you a call next week and see if you have any additional questions and, and we'll go from there. Okay. And so the next week comes around and they pick up the phone and they call the, the prospect and they say, hey, uh, so-and-so, this is such and such. And in this case, it would be, hi, this is Dan Finley with Investor Solutions. I just made up that name. Uh, Investor Solutions. See, the reason for my call is I just want to uh, I want to touch base and I know you came in last week and uh, wanted to find out you wanted to take it home and think about those recommendations. There's the first mistake. You led with the negative, and now they're thinking about the negative. Uh, you you and I'm going back into role play. You uh, wanted to take this home and you wanted to think about it. Um, did you get a chance to think about it? That's the second mistake. You just asked the wrong question, and they're going to say. And you guessed it. Uh, no, I didn't have time to think about it. Um, why don't you give me a call next week? See, I did this for about a decade the wrong way. And so a week later, I would pick up the phone. I would call them, and I would do the same thing. Hey, I uh, just wanted to give you a real quick call. I know you didn't have time to think about it last week, but um, uh, did you get a chance to think about it? Yeah, we thought about it, and uh, we've decided that we're, we're going to just sit tight, and, and uh, we're going to hold off. But if anything changes, we'll, we'll definitely uh, give you a call. So here's what happened. You never found the real objection. And ironically, this can happen at the very beginning. You could cold call someone or warm call someone or call one of your natural market people, and they say to you, you know, you kind of caught me at a bad time. Um, I'm kind of busy. Why don't, you, uh, why don't you send me something? They don't really want you to send them something. And so you say, yeah, okay, well, I'll send something out, and I'll give you a call next week, and you go through the same process. They didn't see it, didn't read it, they didn't care. And they'll say, you know, I didn't get a chance to, to look it over. Why don't you give me a call next week? See, what they're doing is they're not telling you the real objection. And we're, I'm going to teach you, if you sign up for this one, I'm going to teach you how to find the real objection. It's just a process. I call it the smokescreen technique. So the process really is a two-part process. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Here's how it works. And so if I were sitting down with someone or if I called someone and said, and they said to me, you know, I'm just kind of busy. I would say I completely understand, hey, I'm just kind of curious before I let you go. In addition to being busy, what else is holding you back from getting together? 
they are probably going to start to tell me the truth. Well, I, I don't know if I really want to change anything. I, I, I have an advisor, and I believe that, that they have an advisor. And I'm going to, but I'm going to double check, and I'll say, is there anything else? So notice what I did. I combined a technique, the closed-ended or the open-ended question and the closed-ended question. What else is holding you back? Is there anything else? And then they're going to say, um, yeah, no, I mean, that's it. I, I have an advisor. They just told me the real objection. How do I overcome that? We're going to cover that. And so I'm going to jump in with uh, one of probably three different ways. One of the ways might be what's called the objection resolution model. And I'm going to te I'll, I'll teach you this. And what it is, here's how it goes. I have an advisor. I completely understand. In fact, that's everybody I've ever worked with had an advisor when I first met them. But I'm kind of curious. If there was one thing that you could change about your relationship with your current advisor, if you could change anything, hey, what would that be? I don't know. Never hear from the guy. Well, that's exactly why I'd like to get together with you because I have a client servicing system. My clients actually know when I'm going to be calling. They know how many times we're going to get together, and they know what we're going to talk about. Hey, do you have any time at Tuesday at 3 or Wednesday at 4 so I can show you my client servicing system so at least you understand the level of service that other people are getting? Hey, do you have any time at Tuesday at 3 or Wednesday at 4? Which one's better for you? Now, if you know that process to learn how to overcome real objections, it doesn't get, you know, it, it, it's not so hard. It, it gets a lot easier. So you have to learn how to use that herd mentality to overcome objections. And again, I record it, we record it, and we send out the recording. So at this point, I would open it up and ask if you have any questions. But since we don't have, uh, you know, since this is more of a webinar, uh, I'm just going to assume you've got a lot of questions right now. So jot down a question because we're going to open this up at the end. And I'd like to answer your questions. And, and uh, uh, Zach is going to ask me questions when we finish up. But we've got about 20 minutes left. So make sure you jot down a question if you have a question about any of, things, any of the things that we've talked about. Let's talk about number five, the 60-second market story. So here's why this is so important. See, in volatile times, like we had at the beginning of the year and the end of last year, at volatile times, your clients need to know what's going on. Most advisors, now this is on the financial advisory side, most advisors don't have a process. They've never thought it out. They've never created a process. So they get a phone call uh, out of the blue from a client who says, hey, what's going on in the market? Now, if you're not following the market, all the time. You're kind of dead in the water. You don't look good. You've lost credibility. But what if you learned a process for explaining the market in 60 seconds? And I have the process. I created it. What if you don't have to reinvent the wheel? In fact, what if you utilize the template, a template to map out this process? So you've got a template and all you have to do is fill in the blanks so that you map out your story and you're explaining what has happened in the market since the beginning of the year, what's happening right now, and what you feel and your company feels may happen, I say may, happen in the future. And finishing it up with, and here's exactly what I li I'd like us to do. I say that we sit tight and here's why. Just think about that. If you're able to role play your 60 second market story, and you can do this in your sleep, and you're updating this little template, and somebody calls, you're ready. But what if you, you're making outgoing calls? In fact, I have a huge, huge producer. This guy, he manages $300 million on the investment side. He's making outgoing calls to his clients. And he's literally calling them. And he sets the stage by saying, hey, I just wanted to give you a real quick uh, check-in call to see if you have any questions about me, about the, the account, about the market, about anything. And notice what I just did. I did three things. And the very last one was about the market. That's what most people think about, the very last thing. And so what they're doing is they're, they're probably going to say, yeah, how is the market? What he does is he jumps right in with his 60-second market story. And when he finishes up, he says, any questions at all? Nope. Is there anything that's changed at all in your business? Nope. Uh-uh. And then he jumps right in and talks about referrals. And I'm going to show you what he does. Not yet, but I'll show you how he has a different referral dialogue than what most people have. But once you get the 60 second market story down, it changes everything when somebody asks you how the market is going.
Mm -hmm. You're no longer just saying, well, the market goes up, the market goes down. It's been kind of volatile and you're winging it. Because if you learn anything from this little webinar, it's winging it doesn't work. You might want to write that down. Winging it doesn't work. And here again, we record the session and we send it out to you as a NAFA member. Number six, the lost art of listing. Now, <laughs> it's ironic that I'm talking about listing when uh, I'm not really listening to any of you right now, but I will be as soon as you ask questions. But what this is all about is a lot of advisors and agents like to do a lot of talking. In fact, they will talk and talk and talk and talk themselves right out of the sale. It's really not about selling anything, actually. It's about helping people want to buy. And the way you help people want to buy is by asking the right questions. We talked about that, spin selling. But the way you help them understand that you're listening, and that's so important, I hope you hear this, pun intended, the way that you help them understand that you're listening is to learn the four levels of empathetic listening. I gotta tell you a quick story. And so years ago, I was in a, a group coaching session. Actually, I call it a, a team coaching session because all of these people in that session were on the same team. A huge group, uh, a huge producer, producers on a huge team in uh, actually in Toronto. And I, I worked with them for two years. Each week we'd role play and we'd role play the same thing for a month. And what was ironic was we were in a role play session and I paused the two people that were in there. And one we called an advisor, one we called the prospect, taking the role as a prospect. And I said, pause, pause. Here's what I'm hearing. You, the advisor, can't wait to ask the next, the next question. Here's what you're doing. Question, answer. That other person answers and you jump into a next question. You're not even letting that person know you heard them. Question, answer, question, answer. That's not a conversation. That is, to me, an interrogation. That is, you know, uh, an investigation. Or that's, a, that, you know, that's, that's going to an interview. And so their boss said, hey, does anybody have a copy of the seven, high, the seven Habits of Highly Effective People? And I said, I do. And he said, so do I. Open it up, go to page 178 or whatever it was, lower left-hand corner, there's this thing called empathetic listening. Now, I actually thought Stephen Covey invented this, but he didn't. It's been around for a long time. It was around in the early 70s. And so what the four levels of empathetic listening are, it's a process for letting people know that you heard them. Level one is mimicking. You don't want to do that. That's what a little six-year-old does when they're annoying. Um, you know, I, you know eat, eat, your, eat, your, <laughs> eat your food. Eat my food. Just eat your food. Eat my food. It's annoying. Okay, but there is a, a way to do that. And the way to do that is when, uh, which is socially acceptable, is when you actually do it regarding um, uh, numbers. It's crazy. I, I noticed this. There was a pattern. When somebody says, well, how much do you have in your uh, 401k? 500,000. Oh, 500,000. People don't mind that, that mimicking. Level two, rephrasing. Super powerful. That's when you hear something, but you rephrase what you heard. It's also called reflective listening. And when you're rephrasing and somebody says, uh, here's an example. The advisor says, uh, how much do you think you have in your 401k, your old 401k? Well, I think it's 500,000, but it's been sitting there in a long, you know, a long time, and I haven't looked at it very long. And you reply by rephrasing, and you say, yeah, you know, a lot of people don't look at their 401ks. They get their statements, and they don't open it up. So it could be a lot longer. It could be higher because the market's gone up. What you've just done is you've connected. That's effortless connecting and making an effortless connection. And so level two, empathetic listening is pretty powerful. Level three is our feelings. So let's use that same example. So picture this. You're saying something like uh, you're the advisor and you say, so how much do you think you have in your 401k? Well, I think it's about 500,000, but I'm not quite sure. Um, and you say, well, it, you know, if that's, I, I can understand that. It can be a little confusing. I mean, we get a lot of statements all, all the time from, from, you know, from your company. So, uh, and what you're doing is you're talking about feelings. That can be a little confusing. Now, I almost did a level four. Level four is, uh, is our feelings and rephrasing. And so if I elongated that, I would say, well, that can be a little confusing. I mean, we get a lot of statements that comes in the mail, and a lot of times we don't even open these things. I mean, I went through the same thing years ago when I wasn't in the industry. So I get it. So you're making a great connection. So what I just showed you is something that I created called the filler formula. The filler formula now is 
a formula that goes question, that's what you're doing, answer, that's what they're doing, and then a filler, that's what empathetic listening is. But empathetic listening is only one of five forms. And I won't go into the other four forms, but anyway, you do one of these all day, every day, and you don't even know it. I guarantee you, you're doing it all day. And you probably just did it listening to this. And so uh, the, the next thing to know is that we record these sessions and we send them out to you as a NAFA member. So number seven, attracting referrals. I mentioned referrals a second ago. I've got a, well, actually, I don't know if I even put it in here in the advisor success stories, but uh, I've got a guy that, uh, hopefully I did. In fact, I've got a guy that got 27 referrals in one month, 27. I had a brand new advisor that, well, not brand new to the industry. He's been in the industry for a long time, 20 years, and he typically would never get referrals. I showed him this process, and the next week he got five referrals. I had a brand new rookie, actually, that uh, we went over this, and he got, I think it was nine referrals in one week. And so what you'll learn in that session about attracting referrals really comes down to doing the opposite of what everybody does. See, most people don't know the biggest mistake advisors and agents make when making referrals or asking for referrals. Let me let you in on the secret of what it is. They do it for themselves. See, there's only two reasons that anybody's ever going to give you a referral. Number one, they want to help you grow your business. Number two, so remember that. They want to help you grow your business. Number two, they want to help somebody they care about. Of the two, now I'm, as you're listening to this, of the two, which do you think is more powerful. Now, if you said they want to help you grow your business, you're wrong. They don't care about helping you grow your business. What they care about is somebody that they love and care about. And so most people ask a advisor-centered referral dialogue, and it sounds like this. Who do you know that I could give a call to and introduce myself? That's the wrong way to ask for referrals. That'll get you deer in the headlights, and you don't want to do that. And they'll instantly not remember anyone. Instead, you want to learn the client-centered referral dialogue. What that's all about is changing the whole conversation, okay? You're changing the whole conversation to find out the answers to these types of questions. Has this been helpful? Now, the reason you want to ask that question, has this been helpful? And when you would do that would be after a review or a client check-in, like my client does, and asking the question, hey, has this been helpful? I'm just kind of curious. And they say, yeah, yeah, it really has. Hey, how has this helped you most? Well, I kind of understand the market now, and I understand what we have. And, uh, I, you know, I'm glad you called. Thank you. Great. How do you feel about that? Well, like I said, I'm glad you called. And I appreciate these, these check-in calls that, you, you know, you had mentioned. And uh, so you're going to call me every month like this? Yeah, I'll call you every month. And we'll just do a check-in, and I'll explain what's going on in the market. Great. I appreciate that. Good, good. Hey, a uh, quick question before we go. Uh, who would you like to help? This is where you get the deer in the headlights. Uh, what do you mean? This is client-centered referral dialogue. Who would you like to help feel great about what they're doing because they understand the market and they've got a plan to help them have a comfortable retirement? And this is where you might get, I don't know. But if you've been name sourcing, you've been writing down things that they've told you, like they went to Ireland with their best friend, and you know, friends, it's a couple you know exactly what to do. Or they go to, to Alaska and fish every year with their brother. You would jump in and say, you know, if they say, I can't really think of anyone, I don't know. Well, do you think you'd want to help your, uh, your parents or adult children? Or, or, you know, do you think you'd want to help your brother, Tim, who you go to Alaska with every year? You mentioned you go to Alaska with him. Do you think you'd want to help him understand what he's doing and understanding the market so he has a comfortable retirement? Or maybe your friends, Joe and Mary that you went to Ireland with. You think you want to help them? Now, here's what's probably going to happen. He, he or she is going to say, you know, I would. I, I just don't know what they're doing. And it's easy. The conversation is easy from there. How would we know that? I don't know. I guess we should just, maybe, maybe we should get together with that. Exactly. That's exactly what I'd like to do. Why don't we grab lunch? And then you talk about, why don't we grab lunch? We could uh, set up a, a tentative lunch appointment for next week. And what we'll do is we'll just sit down and, and uh, I'll just find out about them. And, and eventually, I'm sure they're going to bring up about themselves, you know, or they're, eventually they're going to ask about us and, 
and we can explain the process and, and just see if it, the conversation evolves into they, they don't really understand what they've got. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but let's find that out. That's how one advisor got 27 referrals in a month. And so we practice this uh, client-centered referral dialogue. We record the session and we send it out to you as a NAFA member. So hopefully you're kind of understanding that I have a process for everything. And, uh, but I didn't. I didn't when I was in production and I was in production for 13 years. Here's one of the processes that most people don't have. Great elevator speech. Here's what most people do. They say something like this. So what do you do? Uh, I'm a financial advisor at so-and-so. Or what do you do? Oh, I'm, I'm an insurance agent at State Farm. Now that's great and everything, but that's like saying I'm a dentist at so-and-so. Who cares? There's nothing to that. So what you learn in here, you learn the elements of creating a great elevator speech and the elements really come down to, there's key elements and really what you wanna do is you wanna get them to, you wanna help them understand that there's a common challenge, that you have a solution and that you're interested in helping them. So one of my clients years ago, a guy named Mark Smith, so if you're listening to this, Mark, uh, I'm just proud of the way that you put this all together or we put it together when we created the elevator speech. He would say this, and when somebody would say, uh, you know, they'd introduce themselves to him at a networking event, he'd say, I'm, I'm Mark Smith with such, with such and such, and he'd say the company name. And then he'd say, um, I specialize in helping my clients avoid the great American retirement crisis. Instantly, that person would say, and you're probably thinking this, what's that? And they'd say, well, what's that? Well, the great American retirement crisis is that in the next 15 years, 80% of the people that are retiring in the next 15 years won't be able to maintain the same lifestyle because they won't have the, the right income stream to be able to do that. Hey, what are you doing in order to be in the 20% that does? And now he's just asked a question. He's pulled them in. He's talked about the challenge. He's asked them a question that he's mentioned that he helps people, you know, he specializes in helping them avoid the great American retirement crisis. And then he asks them a question, what are you doing to be in the 20% the that does? And then boom, they're saying, well, uh, you know, I've got a financial advisor or whatever it is. And then he jumps right into explaining why he'd like to do a second opinion just to make sure. So I've created a template. I've taken all the guesswork out of it. All you just fill in the blanks and it's super easy. And then we role play the template and then you get the recording. But we record this and we send it out to you because you're a NAFA member. So are you starting to see the value in being a NAFA member? I mean, there's a lot to this that you're getting for free. So I wanna go over number nine and 10, and then we're gonna open it up for questions. And I know I'm running out of time, and I, I didn't think this was possible to run out of time just being on this webinar by myself, you know, talking uh, as everybody's listening. But number nine, unclogging the pipeline. There's four stages. I've whittled it down to four stages of the pipeline. And so what we do is we talk about the most common clogs in the pi pipeline. I guarantee you, you got a clog in your pipeline. You've had it there for years. You may not even know it. In fact, if you sign up for that group coaching session, I guarantee you that we're going to figure out your clog. Actually, you'll figure it out based on what we're talking about. There's a clog at each stage, and everybody has a clog, and everybody's clog is something that they've never thought about on how to unclog it. But I got to tell you a quick story. I had a guy that learned how to unclog these, you know, his pipeline. There's four stages. He took the biggest clog. We unclogged it. Then he took the second. We unclogged it. Then he took the third. We unclogged it. He's one of my advisor success stories I'm going to talk about in a second. We record this, and I send out the recording because you're a NAFA member. Number 10, beyond the production plateau. What you're going to learn is you're going to learn why we get on a production plateau. It really comes down to fear. But I'm going to talk about the fear of failure and the fear of success. We're going to talk about the five steps to get you beyond the production plateau. You're going to learn how other successful advisors and agents do that. And I'm going to record it, and I'm going to send it out to you because you're a NAFA member. Now, I want to talk about some of these uh, success stories, and then we're going to turn it over to Zach, and we're going to talk about some of your questions. So what kind of success have advisors and agents had? Here is a fraction of what I've seen, the success I've seen. Now, all of these people became clients. They all got into group, and they all worked with me one-on-one -on -one as well. Actually, some of them not even one-on-one, -on -one, but they've been in group. I want to tell you about Chuck. Chuck 
is the person that took those time management uh, tools that I talked about and he doubled his business. It took him a year and a half, a year and a half, actually a year the first time. He doubled it again a year later. Chuck was in his 60s when he did this. So he wasn't brand new in this business. Rob, Rob is the guy that unclogged his pipeline. The biggest clog that Rob had was in stage three, which is where you're closing the second appointment. And this is the one that, well, bottom line, they become a client or there's additional business. He closed seven out of nine second appointments. He told me that on Friday. He's, at, he's now closed seven out of nine since he's really perfected this. That's huge. That equates to a lot of money uh, in his pocket, but helping a lot of people because it's not about the money. It's about who you're helping. Tuck. Tuck is an advisor that was, uh, had been in the business for four years. He averaged on the investment side, he averaged only $2 million in new assets for four years. He was at $8 million. Now, Tuck, 13 months later, is at $25 million. And so in January, I did an advisor success story. That's, you, can, you can request that. So just if you want that advisor success story, just put in advisor success story audio dash Tuck. And I'll know exactly which one I'm going to send you. And so Tuck talk, talks about what happened. He went from averaging $2 million a year for four years to bringing in $2 million in a month in January of this year. And I said, is it a fluke? And it's okay if it's a fluke. We recorded this. I recorded uh, an interview with him. And he said, no. In fact, I'm going to do more than that this month in February. Uh, you know? And so anyway, he, went, he got $17 million in 13 months. All he did was apply the solutions that I've created, solutions that you can get free as a NAFA member. Glenn did an advisor success story. These two are good friends and they're in what I call a mini team session where they, those two role play with each other. And we do that twice a month for an hour each. So two hours a month, as well as being in group for four hours a month. And Glenn is, has been in the business for six years. He had a $75,000 a month last month, a NAFA member, $75,000 a month. Now you would think Glenn had been in the business for 20 years, 30 years. Nope six years because he's applying these solutions. Robert. Robert is an advisor, a NAFA member that had net a $200,000 closing on Friday. That's net in his pocket. What about you? What about you? Do you want to get to the next level? You can, but don't do this. This is my quote. Never wait to succeed. Now is the time to take action. So I said at the beginning of this, and I know we're coming to the top of the hour, I, I, I talked about 1993 where I said, I, I feel like I'm treading water and looking for land. Right now, I feel like I'm the lighthouse for those who are treading water and looking for land. Do not wait to succeed. Do not wait to succeed. Sign up for these free group coaching sessions. Uh, we do these twice a month. So Zach, let's open it up for questions, but also sign up for the group coaching program. You really owe it to yourself to learn these tools and techniques and these solutions and, and you know, strategies. So Zach, uh, let's open it up for questions. And as you can see, as you're, as you're watching this webinar, uh, there's my phone number. Feel free to give me a call. That goes directly to my office. Leave a, a voicemail and I will call you back or uh, shoot me an email, dan at advisorsolutionsinc.com. Zach, take us off uh, mute and uh, uh, let's open this up for any, any questions, please. Thanks so much, Dan. Uh, sure. Fantastic. I, personally, I know that my takeaway is that I need to stop winging things because winging it doesn't work. <laughs> That's hey, good. I'm glad you got that. Absolutely. Um, so if there are any questions, we can take a couple minutes, uh, just sort of wait it out. But Dan, that fantastic stuff. Thank you so much. Good, good. And Zach, uh, I'll finish up very soon because literally in one minute, I'm in a group coaching session. So uh, yeah. sorry that I I didn't give us more time. Do you have any questions at all? In the interest of time, if you do have any questions, uh, this webinar will be made available at a later date. And uh, uh, you have Dan's email there. Uh, you can also email us at uh, membernews at nafa.org. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, stop since it's just about the top of the hour. But Dan, once again, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Zach. And I appreciate all of you for watching this webinar. webinar and uh, you can have this kind of level of success too. You're a NAFA member. NAFA is doing a lot for you. So utilize these, these, uh, you know, look every Friday, you get an email and in that email, scroll down and sign up for this. Please do.
uh, because you're going to, you're going to be thanking yourself. So with that said, thank you, Zach, for letting me be in here. Have a great day and thank you for, uh, for your time. Thanks so much, Dan. Bye everybody. <laughs>